Hello, everybody. Welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello. Now, uh, Google Stadia, where are you at on it right now? Look, right, I was actually surprisingly excited for it a few <laughs> months ago. But the more I hear about it, including the launch lineup, including yeah. their, about, about, about their exclusive titles, Scott, I'm souring on it, man. I don't think the streaming revolution is going to happen how I wanted it to. No. Well, it's happening in uh, visual form. If you want to just be bombarded by various sort of video streaming platforms, you can go and do that, get buried under a mountain of potential hashtag content. Certainly can. But what won't be on Google Stadia is an array of new titles. So they've released their launch lineup, which is just kind of weak. Um, I'm just going to run things down. Basically, um, they're banking on the idea that you haven't played some of the most popular games of the last few years. Like what? Well, um, I'm just going to run these through. So you give me a yay or a nay as to whether you would buy a new service to play this thing. Okay, come on. I would like yay or nay. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Eh. Destiny 2, The Collection. Absolutely not. Brand new game called Guilt. What's it about? I don't know. Yeah! <laughs> it's the one new game that they've got coming. One original game called Guilt, G-Y-L-T, great name for awesome Google that, Stadium. Um, so yes, also that, Just Dance 2020. Absolutely not. I didn't think How so. How would that even work for streaming, right? I don't want to go off on one. <laughs> I don't want to be the animated, you know, guy on the internet who's yelling at things I mean, but at be. the same time. How can you do Just Dance if you don't have a stable streaming connection? I'll tell you what we could do. That just completely messes up all the moves. We can be stressed out YouTube person who says the comment and then waits and goes, and then continues what they're going to say because they're just that racked by what they need. So, oh, just give us a minute. Right, okay, yeah, no, I'll get on with it. Um, yeah, so the next thing down is Keen. Don't know what that is, K-I-N-E, but it's not an original game because the only one that they're advertising as an original thing is Guilt. Right. Do you want to play Keen? I don't know what that is. But, Me neither. Uh, yes. Decent band, sure. one song, probably not there. <laughs> Could be. You never know, Mortal Kombat 11? It might be. Uh, no, no. No? No. I mean, it's fine. You can play it on literally everything else. That's it. That's yeah, so I'm going to buy a new, entirely new console and subscription service for these games at the moment. Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, I've, no, no. Rise of the no. Tomb Raider. Uh, absolutely not. No? Rise of the Tomb Raider, not Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Oh, uh, well, these are alphabetical order, good friend. Okay. So you give me a minute. Okay. But yeah, Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, Samurai Showdown. Sure. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yes, I would actually. I we, would do that. What? Why Shadow and not Rise? Just because it's a weird tradition that I buy consoles I don't really need for Tomb Raider games. I got okay. Xbox One for Rise of the Tomb Raider, so I might as well get the Google Stadium. You might as well. So the, the last two are Thumper and then the 2013 Tomb Raider. Right. None of these why Tomb games. Why Tomb Raider? Why love the Tomb Raider? I don't know. Does that franchise just need like all the help it can get? Yes, this, literally. Yeah. yeah, jokes aside, this kind of sucks. This Love it. kind of is lame. Like you expect when, even though this is the sort of you know Founders Edition or whatever, mm. it's only available to people who pre-order. Mm -hmm. This gives people like us no mm -hmm. reason to want to jump on board no. early and be an early adopter because all of these games, or at least the vast majority of them, we can either play already, mm -hmm. presumably in a you know more stable fashion without any lag or latency, mm -hmm. and there's no real big sort of you know first party major ex exclusive that's going to take full control of what the Stadia has to offer. And not even does, control. Not even control, not even the game control, which <laughs> absolutely sucks. I don't know, man, like the more I hear about this platform, the more sour I am on it. Like I said, I just, I wanted it to be a big deal because mm. competition, you know, breeds innovation mm -hmm. and, you know, exciting new ideas. And it was clear that when this platform was first announced that both Microsoft and Sony were quite, not scared of it, but mm. certainly cautious of the impact it might have. Mm -hmm. But if this is the launch lineup, that it's, impact uh, seems muted. It kind of reminds me when, you know, when the sort of Wii and Wii U came out. Mm. And it was only sort of third party games that everyone had already played. Yes. And it was enhanced editions. God, the, yeah, the really, Wii U launch lineup. Yeah, in that, like, it, this reminds me very much of that. But in that case, at least they had, like, Wii U specific features. Like, you know, yeah. you could use the touchpad when you're playing Arkham Origins or whatever. Uh, in this case, yeah, the, it's all third party stuff. It's all things that you've already played. And um, in terms of the rollout, it's the Founders Edition that's out on the 19th uh, of um, November, which is like, you know, that's the one that you you'll pay more for. It's the early. It's essentially the early access version of Google Stadia, um, and they've just said that the base version is coming some point in 2020. So uh, mm, get your pre-orders in. I kind of wonder like how confident they are with this overall because it's weird. Yeah. It's, it's games industry AF to charge more for the product that doesn't work. But like I mean, it makes sense to roll it out to some people and test it and make sure that you can actually access things and they all stream properly. Um, but my gut feeling is just saying that it's not going to work, and it's it's a disaster waiting to happen in terms of the amount of yeah. people that'll be putting money in to it, assuming that they're just going to be able to get this 4K 60fps experience and they'll just be struggling to play Red Dead 2. Well, that's this. This isn't just sort of like a base okay. console like the next PlayStation or the next Xbox where you can, you know, you have a sort of understanding of what it is capable of, mm. what you are going to get out of the box. For one, not only is the launch lineup of this quite bad, but the tech <laughs> itself, like you said, is it's unproven, it could be unstable, it mm. might not work as you want it to work. So without that sort of, you know, promise of something greatly decided, a great game, mm -hmm. or, you know, a game that I at least haven't played. I don't know why there would be any incentive to actually 
go and be an early adopter because what are you actually getting? The thing about the games industry, Scott Tilford, <laughs> and it's something that's creeped up on me over the past few years, is uh -huh. that there is no benefit from getting anything day one except no. from your own personal excitement. Yep. And I'm trying to detach from that because I am someone who gets swept up in the hype and needs to get everything day one, mm -hmm. but if you wait, you get things cheaper, you get better games, you get more games, you get more choice. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of emblematic of that sort of, you know, thought process. Yeah, and I, I think that the thing this is going up against, which is just, I, I think they have the biggest mountain to get across. I'm thinking in mountains Death and ladders Stranding and ropes because of Death Stranding. Mm -hmm. The biggest hurdle to get across with this is that people don't believe in streaming technology in regards to games. Um, and the min most minuscule latency will completely wreck any experience. Think Like you said, you mentioned Just Dance. Anything that is more responsive heavy, any fighting games, things like Destiny 2, Mortal Kombat 11, like yeah. they're games that are, they rely entirely on the most like, you know, pixel perfect, um, responsiveness and if that is off by a millisecond like a fraction of a second you're never going to play this entire platform yes and it's just and i think that i just um, the way that um, Xbox demoed their uh, xCloud technology, which um, Phil Spencer was talking quite a lot about, and Xbox seemed to be sort of deviating into that in, under the assumption that streaming is just going to become a big thing. Sony tried it with Gaikai back on the PS3 and it didn't really work. And even they kind of admitted defeat and just let you download games instead on PS Now, mm -hmm. some of them anyway. Um, and I think that it's weird. The bigger companies, the more established companies are kind of going like, okay, we can devote some R&D to this potential thing that might happen. Um, but the company that's trying to lead the way on it aren't really demoing in it very well. People no. have proven that the original Google Stadia demo was faked, like looking at the actual like lineup between what the dude was doing and what was on screen. Um, I mean, I mean, I believe the video that I saw was saying it was fake. Maybe it isn't categorically fake. <laughs> Google comes bursting through the windows, but I'm pretty sure it was. Um, and I think that, you know, I believe, I more believe the Project xCloud stuff than them, because at least Microsoft have let hundreds of journalists sit down and actually yeah. play it and go, okay, this technology actually does work. But I don't believe it's going to work for all oh. of our connections. I just don't think it's going to work. I also, you know, agree with you there. Yeah. But just to play a devil's advocate, looking at Bring the games it. they have sort of announced, like you said, Just Dance, Mortal Kombat 11, mm -hmm. and Thumper especially, these are games, like you said, which could go completely wrong if you have even, you know, the hint of actual lag because mm -hmm. they'll just throw you off completely because they're all rhythm-based mm -hmm. or at least input-based, like very precise. Mm -hmm. But Choosing those three games, especially yep. if this if this can succeed, they could be great sort of examples of look the tech works. You can play oh, yeah. Thumper, which you know is, requires precise timing. You can have a an action uh, a fighting game on the platform that mm -hmm. you know works as well as any console or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And if they absolutely nail it with those games, maybe they're sort of the proof of concept. Maybe it's not about you know having the latest games or having mm -hmm. you know interesting exclusives. And all that is obviously important. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just about having a breadth of games and saying look. All of this just works. The thing is, like, just works. what it can offer is is exemplary if it can work. The idea of just paying this monthly fee to get this 4K 60fps Xbox One X level, I mean it was above the Xbox One X when they compared the potential statistics of it, uh, specifications of it, um, is, is amazing in theory. And I like the idea that they're hedging their bets and rolling the dice on something like, like you said, like Thumper, like Just Dance, things that are like so pinpoint precise. It's not a narrative heavy thing. They're not launching with Gone Home or Firewatch, things that yeah. can sort of be played with a, you know, with lag quote unquote, um, as opposed to something that is going to require that level of like, you know, immediacy and responsiveness. Um, maybe that is them just trying to, you know, do something like a Pokemon Go style scenario where it's like, hey, look, it's just here and the world freaks out because mm -hmm. overnight you can just have a six, you can have a brand new console yeah. overnight, go pay this money. Like it's all going to hedge on it working like that. Um, they have announced some games that are coming towards the end of 2019 as well, and um, which I'll just quickly throw in because um, they've said that they haven't <laughs> got specific dates on these. Um, it's all very nebulous. It's all very like, well, we've got the founders dates. So we'll have your money right now. <laughs> we don't know when the base version's coming and we don't know when the rest of the games are coming. Um, but we do have a selection of titles that you've already, whatever, you've already played. Um, more stuff's coming, including Attack on Titan 2 Final Battle. Can't wait. I used to love Attack on Titan, it kind of mm. fell apart. Uh, Borderlands 3, sure. Yeah. Borderlands 3 is very solid, but you can go play it for way cheaper. On other, well, I guess you can go play it on a more stable system yeah. elsewhere. Um, Darksiders Genesis, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Farming Simulator 19, Final it's Fantasy in. 15, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Lol, Whoa. that doesn't even work on a stable system, never mind trying to put a streaming uh, element into it. Um, blah, 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 blah. Grid, Metro Exodus, uh, NBA 2K20, Rage 2, Trials Rising, and Wolfenstein Youngblood. All things that are already out yep. and very, very cheap my, elsewhere. My major gripe here with this, Scott, and I, I've taken nine minutes to you know, finally get to it, <laughs> but my major gripe with this is the Founders Edition, uh, the founders edition yes. is out now, but the actual console well, 19. for... Every, well, yes, yes. Well, yes. 19 yeah. for the founders. 19th, yes, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, the console itself is coming uh, properly sometime next year. Mm -hmm. The issue is 
there are next-gen consoles also coming at the end of next year yeah. as well. So the, the question Google is going to have is they need something killer to come out the gate mm. with if they want to stop people from just saying, look, why would I pony up for this console right now that's unproven, doesn't have many games, mm -hmm. when I know Sony's next console is coming out in a few months. I know Microsoft have a, you know, hopefully a killer lineup prepared for the Xbox Scarlet. Mm -hmm. Like, there's only going to be a few months between them, and mm -hmm. if, if, if the showing for these next-gen machines are great when it comes to early next year, I just don't see how Google can even compete with that, or at least, you know, from the general console player market mm -hmm. like me and you. Well, plus you said consoles, like, I mean, you need a Chromecast for this thing to work, but mm -hmm. like, that's it. They don't have like a, a physical thing. But even then, um, like I said, the idea of like someone impulse buying, like, oh, I'm just gonna cough up the money and have the things beamed to my TV, you can't. Uh, not yet, anyway. Like maybe TVs will launch with Google, like with um, Google Stadia integration, but we're not there yet. Um, like I said, I think there's a whole bunch of infrastructural elements in regards to like overall network speeds and the accessibility of it on our side, on the on the uh, you know the average customer side. I just don't think the infrastructure is there for it. Um, and I'll be amazed. And I don't think they're they're not backing it up by saying that. Well, just trust us. We've got all these deals in place. We've got all these different people on board or whatever. They've kind of just gone. Well, here's a selection. Of, here's a selection of titles yeah. from the last decade, and they're brilliant, brilliant <sighs> games. But if you're the the gamble they want you to make is paying less on a potentially like unstable connection versus putting money down on an actual console and guaranteeing you'll actually be able to play the game. Yeah. So it's a weird gamble, and in, I I like it in terms of bringing games to the masses. Um, but I think that also sets so many people up for disappointment when X doesn't require doesn't result in the button actually pushing anything. You know what? Maybe it's going to be a sort of a, a grower, not a shower. You know, <laughs> it might be like the PlayStation VR, which mm. I love. That launched at a really high <coughs> price point. They were difficult to get. There weren't many games out there and people, even us included, were No Man's Sky? Hey, hey. Now it's fine, now it's good. That I mean, wasn't there at launch. It's good now. Right. Yeah. It's fine now, but yeah. what, I, what, I, what I meant was, you know, at launch there were people, even me, who, who lives the machine now, mm -hmm. were wondering, is this going to be sort of a failed experiment? Are Sony even going to support it? Obviously they did, mm. and maybe we're in a similar situation like that with Google Stadia. Maybe it's not trying to compete with the likes of Microsoft and Sony mm -hmm. on the same level as a console right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're just sort of setting the groundwork and get people interested, get these early adopters in, get the word of mouth spread being like, you know what, Google Steady is actually really mm. good. And then by the time people get around to buying it, they might have actual games in it. That's Maybe. The, that's the pipe dream hope. That would kind of make sense it. in terms of building excitement for next year's actual release. Google have a track record of abandoning things if they don't work immediately. So yeah, like true. Google Plus or whatever. Um, so we'll see. But let us know what you think down in the comments below of the idea of Google Stadia now that you know what games you'll be playing, if you were going to invest in the Founders Edition or just wait until next year and hoping that it comes together. But now though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. I'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.